Hi friends, it's Nathan and welcome to my channel. I'm an incoming pharmacy student at the University of Waterloo, but I'm currently studying at Harvard. And today I wanted to share with you how I take notes depending on the subject. Note taking is not a one size fits all system and we tend to treat it like it, but it's not. That's why it's so important to know how to adapt depending on the course. So today I'm going to be showing you what I did in university, but if you're in high school, don't worry, these tips will still apply to you because a lot of it is actually what I developed in high school and then further reinforced in college. So without further ado, let's get on to note taking. So the first subject I'm going to start with is chemistry. Now chemistry is not an easy subject and I fully understand that. I've taken a lot of chemistry in my days and it really helps when you have a effective note taking system. So these are my course notes for organic chemistry one. And if you don't use course notes, then you can just replace what I'm saying with your textbook or the slides that your professor gives you. But I'm just going to break it down on how I take notes for chemistry. And I'm using organic chemistry as the main example, but what I'm saying applies to all branches of chemistry, whether that's inorganic, organic, physical, whatever. Before I even enter the lecture, I like to read through the content and highlight. So I know a lot of people have mixed feelings about highlighting, but I think highlighting can be very effective when done correctly. So what I'm doing is I'm reading the content and I'm highlighting because that forces my brain to comprehend the information. You can't highlight what you don't understand, right? And that just gives me a rough idea so that going into the lecture, I'm not completely lost. This is great for chemistry because topics do become very advanced and complex, but you should be doing this as a practice for all your courses. So this is what it looks like after reading through and highlighting. And I'm not highlighting everything. Like I don't understand why people highlight everything because it just defeats the purpose. Just highlight main ideas, a sentence here and there, just to capture the rough concept. So here it is all highlighted. This is what my notes will look like going into the lecture. And then after the lecture, I would have made annotations you see here. Because you have a rough idea of the concept already, what the professor is saying will make a lot more sense and it'll reinforce what you kind of already know so that you just get a stronger understanding. I also like to do myself is have a kind of fact sheet. What I do is just write down information that is good to know at the top of my head. So we know that one alkene will have two cis trans isomers and two stereo isomers. This is information that's good to know at the top of your head or just little tricks to remember. And that's just what a fact sheet is. Something you should also be incorporating into your notes is problems, okay? Problems make great examples for you to refer to. So here we have a compound here. It's reacting with what? And it gives you an example. So here, SN2. This is an elimination reaction. So when you're looking back at your notes, you can refer, oh, this is what an SN2 reaction looks like. This is what an E2 reaction looks like. Problems make great examples for you to refer to. So that's pretty much how I took notes for chemistry. I think with chemistry, you have to be very systematic and intentional with what you're doing. Everything that you're doing has to have a purpose, you know? There is so much to cover and there's no time to really waste on ineffective strategies. So stick with these and I'm sure that chemistry will come a lot easier. So the next topic is biology. And biology is a very different subject than chemistry. Even though they're both sciences, they're very different because chemistry, you have something that is very problem heavy. And then with biology, you have something that is more content heavy. Most biology professors will actually give you slides so that you can follow along, so definitely use those to your advantage. So for microbiology, I basically just annotated the PDF on my laptop and it worked perfectly for me. And here I am just annotating uh, the notes here, protein, feet that glides along the cell wall. That's just explaining a little more about the gliding motility, right? Or protein extends out of cell, better explaining twitching motility. One thing that is very important is annotating your biological diagrams. Diagrams are great for, you know, taking, again, long paragraphs of text into really short form, easy visuals to understand and to possibly even memorize, but they won't make sense if you don't understand the science behind them. That's why you have to annotate. You can look at something, you know, and it make perfect sense during the lecture, and then you come a few days after and you're reviewing it, and it's like, what is going on? So just making sure that you're annotating everything. But here, look, I'm annotating the diagram, okay? This diagram isn't very specific. You just have two labels here. It gives you what it is, but you know, you want to know how this diagram is working. You know, if it was to work in real life, what would it be doing? So here is where I explain that. 
I wouldn't say there's actually any cons to over annotating. You know, if you over annotate, you can just erase it off after, but make sure that you get all the information during the lecture and then you can condense as necessary during your study time. So as you saw for microbiology, it worked really well because everything was pretty linear, if that makes sense. Uh, it's just words but if your course requires more drawing so something like biochemistry then you have to switch up your tactic a little bit so if you have an ipad that's great you can remain paperless i refuse to go down the ipad route it's like a whole spiel but like i don't like the texture of you know a stylus on a screen and also my writing looks really ugly on it but you know credits to those people that make it super nice anyways we're getting off topic for biochemistry, I just had to resort to old-fashioned pen and paper. I printed out everything quite thick, um, but you know, you have to do what you have to do. And there's a whole bunch of studies, but actually writing on paper is very effective in terms of remembering the information and understanding it. Here are my biochemistry notes. So look, you have this diagram. Looking at this diagram, you have no idea what is going on. You don't know what that is, you don't know what that is, but during the lecture, I'm annotating, okay, I know that's glycine, that's tyrosine, so that when I look back, I'll know actually what is going on here, and I don't have to refer online, all the information is right here. I'm also adding on information, so here we have just mutations, you know, I'm adding, it's easier for O2 reduced than Fe oxidized, or uh, again, short forms, okay, move into pocket. Your notes can be vague sometimes, so you want to be adding in more information to help you better understand it. Yeah, that's pretty much what I did for biochemistry. Notice that there's a lot more annotations being made in biochemistry, and that's pretty much because of the prof. Uh, her slides were very vague, and I needed to fill in the gaps. And sometimes profs will test a lot on what they say verbally, and not so much what's on the slides. So just making sure that you're accommodating and you're adapting to how the prof is teaching and how they will be eventually testing you. Now on to everyone's favorite subject, math. As a STEM major and now as a pharmacy student, math was always my weakest link. It was a very tough subject and I had to work twice as hard to get the grade that I wanted, but there is a method to the madness and that method unfortunately is pretty much write everything down on the board. I usually don't like to say that, but with math, you should be writing everything down on the board because it's step based. So you don't want to be skipping any steps because I promise you, you're gonna you know, think you know the steps, you're gonna write, maybe skip a couple steps, skip three steps, and then you're looking back at it a couple days later, and you'll be like, how the f did I get from A to B, C to E? And it's just gonna be really confusing. So write everything down, you really need to. These are what my math notes look like, very simple. I have my information in black pen, examples are written with pencil, I just highlight key ideas and terms, one thing that you will notice that I do a little bit unique is that I have a lot of text and I'm actually explaining how to do this question in words. And what this does is that it ensures that I understand the concept logically rather than just using numbers to explain something. I'm really understanding it by the words. You can see that I'm not just, you know, having examples. I'm actually listing the steps that I would go about to solve a question. And this, again, is ensuring that I'm looking at a question logically and I'm actually understanding what is happening. With math, we tend to almost memorize questions and that will do you no good on an exam. Profs are smart and they tend to write questions that tests you on knowledge that you already have, that you've learned, but they twist it or they modify it in a way that you've never seen it before. And that can really trip up a lot of students. And it's tripped up me before, and it's just not fun because you know how to do it, but you just never seen it in a way. And that's when thinking logically and what I told you previously, doing the steps, writing it in words, doing that will ensure that you actually understand the material and then you're able to replicate it no matter what the question looks like. I would say my notes are around 60% uh, examples and 40% text. And it surprises people when people look at my notes. They're like, whoa, you write a lot for like math. And it's because, again, it helps me understand the concept. And I'm sure if you start adding text to your notes as well, just on the side, you know what I mean? Put it in addition to the numbers, in addition to the examples. And trust me, the concepts will make a lot more sense. Next, we're talking about humanity slash social sciences. So this is psychology, history, literature, etc., etc. And with humanities in general, they're very content heavy. And when I say very content heavy, very content heavy. 
so you want to ensure that you're condensing as much as possible. I took a classic uh, classical mythology course as an elective and each chapter would have around three to five pages of notes like typed and that was with me condensing as much as possible already. Imagine if it wasn't condensed, we'd be running 10 pages long. Make sure to condense, condense, condense. And again, you should be condensing every single course except for math. Don't condense your math notes. Most courses you should be condensing because the prof is giving you a lot of information. That's what their job is, right? It's better to give more information during a lecture than it is to give less. But your job as a student is to be able to separate what's relevant and what's irrelevant. What's uh, the main detail and the supporting idea? What's uh, no, the main idea and the supporting detail. There we go. And one thing that a lot of people don't know about is that a lot of humanities professors will actually not have any slides for them, which is not the best, but it's kind of just how a lot of them work. And that can be a tough for a lot of people because you're getting all this verbal information and you have to be able to decipher the verbal information. So when you're typing up your notes or writing whatever, you have to be able to cut out the filler words, cut out the redundant adjectives, right? Because it's going to be verbal, so it's going to be a conversational tone and your notes shouldn't be conversational. Your notes should be short and sweet and to the point. This was a lecture about Athena, the Greek goddess of wisdom, so here we have the title. Um, and then her, the main ideas we'll be looking at are the attributes, the so domestic arts, non-domestic arts, and the patron of heroes. And here we have the supporting details. So we're talking about spinning and weaving for the domestic arts, carpentry, horseshoeing for the non-domestic arts. And notice that these are all one word, two word kind of supporting details with uh, examples or stories to flesh it all out. And if you know the story between Arachne and Athena, you'll know that it's very long, very extensive, but I've just condensed it into three bullet points. That's all you need. Practice being able to really condense and know what's relevant. I actually took Latin and it was one of my favorite electives, but with the language course, you want to make your notes as simple as possible. With languages, it's focusing on a lot of foundational material. So you're looking at grammar, you're looking at rules, you're looking at vocabulary. Don't be writing paragraphs, don't be writing full sentences, you don't need to. Keep it simple. If you're doing grammar, organize it in tables. Nothing fancy, each singular plural and the endings. Show what the endings are in tables. Tables, okay? Tables. Very easy to refer back to and to memorize, especially if you just want to write these during an exam, you know, at the back of the paper, and just draw these out and write them, and then you have them to refer to. Another thing for languages is that you should have a vocabulary list in your notes. So, Again, just make it simple. A tea table, you have your Latin word, your English word. Latin, English, Latin, English, and just have vocab. You'll be surprised at how much vocabulary list can help you. I got basically full marks on all my translations because I knew the vocabulary inside out, okay? So just study the vocabulary, make them because a lot of them don't give it to you. So it's your kind of your responsibility to make it and study from it. And I'm telling you those will help you so, so much. The last subject is business and business can be all over the place. You know, there are elements of humanities in there. There are elements of math in there. So you really want to, I guess, kind of take the tips from the different subjects and kind of mold it into business. We talked previously about the importance of annotating. So annotate your graphs and your diagrams and your chart. These are all very good for visual explanation. But again, you have to have that underlying understanding and that comes with the annotations. For more numerical business courses like finance and accounting, make sure you are writing every single step that the professor is writing on the board. Make sure that you are explaining concepts with text rather than just using numbers or showing it with an example, okay? Make sure you use the text. And again, condense your notes, okay? In courses like international business or economics, it can be pretty thick and pretty content heavy. So just take the main idea and then maybe have a few supporting details, so examples case studies, etc, etc, that kind of stuff, and your notes will be very, very coherent and be good to study from. So those are my tips on how to study for biology, chemistry, math. I just had a brain fart. Biology, chemistry, math, humanities, and business. Taking notes is more than just highlighting and underlining and scribbling some things down. It's really about taking the information, condensing it, and 
organizing the layout so that it makes sense to you and that you can use it to learn and to study from and having it laid out in a way that's effective for you. Just make sure that you remember that note taking is not a one size fits all and that every single course should have a different way of taking notes. Also feel free to modify these tips according to your learning style. You saw that I use very little color. If you like using color, if you think that helps you, go for it. You know, I do occasionally do take um, the tactics that from one course into another course, right? It's all about adapting it, okay? If you feel like this prof is teaching in a way that is not so much effective with just your standard humanities, you know, take some elements from another course and implement them in and try that. These are a set of tools that you can have in your toolbox so you can whip them out for the kill uh, when you need to and get those A plus that you deserve. <laughs> If you found this video, uh, make sure to give it a like, comment how you take your notes, or what was your favorite tip uh, in this video. I respond to every single comment. Uh, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification while you're at it. You might as well, it's right over there. You can follow my Instagram, which is linked below. But that's it for me, and I will see you friends in the next video. Bye!